All right, <clears throat> what you're looking at is where the power supply goes on a BC348. Now, if you bought a BC348 and you didn't get the dynamotor, you have to build a power supply. Now, in this space, you can fit a piece of aluminum that's six and an eighth inch by three inches and three quarter. Okay, and I have built that. Okay, and you'll notice that if you watch my other videos on the um, command radios, this, it, this is starting to look very familiar. Okay, this, this 24 volt, yeah, my fingernails are long. Uh, this transformer is a 24 volt, that, that lights the filaments. Then this 24 volts feeds a uh, 18 volt transformer backwards and produces the high voltage out of the primary of the transformer. Now, if you saw my other videos, you'll see this in most of them. And this is uh, two capacitors, a full rate bridge, and a resistor. And that's what's going to be down in here, sitting up on a sitting up on a standoff so the wires can go underneath back and forth. There'll be a hole so the wires can go underneath. And this is how I, I did the terminal underneath. This is all the specifications and size of the actual dynamotor. Okay, this is a piece of trim channel. It's got a big square hole. And uh, the original dynamotor has five terminals. I only have four. Okay, I'm using what I got. And I went looking for these things, this type of terminal. And they're getting rare because, you know, no one builds anything anymore. And if they do, they do it the quickest way. But in other words, I just wanted to show you that's how I'm going. Now, um, as you look around the Internet, you'll see all kinds of information about the power supply. Let's, let's start at the beginning. When this thing came out as surplus, Halicrafters came out with a simple supply. It was a piece of metal, just like I built, with um, a transformer, a large capacitor, and a tube. So say it was a 5Y3. All right. They didn't put any um, chokes on the circuitry. Okay. Now, the one thing you got to remember on this power supply, very important, the minus of the high voltage is floating. And it goes to a network around the... Uh, uh, audio amp and then goes to the rest of the set. It doesn't get grounded. There are people that have drawn the power supply. They're redrawers. There are people that redraw other people's schematics and put their name on it. Uh, they'll show the high voltage side, the minus going to ground. And that'll cause distortion in your audio because you won't have the, the correct uh, biasing. Okay? Just wanted to tell you that. If you miss that, you're going to like, I got, I got distortion in my audio. I can't figure out where it's coming from. Well, you followed the wrong guy's information. Go look around. You'll find the Hellcrafters original power supply for one of these. And it doesn't have a choke in it. Okay? And there is a guy that took a, um, a Dynamotor plate that the Dynamotor sits on. And he put like four transformers on it. Actually, two of them are chokes and two are transformers. But the first step going into this... Are you going to rewire the uh, filaments? Because remember, this has two series strings of four tubes each, and they're six-volt tubes. So each string is 24 volts, and they're in parallel. Now, so the radio wants 24 volts, whether DC or AC, to light the filaments. So what a lot of people do is they, they take a transformer that they have. It puts out six volts. So they rewire the set so all the tubes are in parallel. Or they have a, t a transformer that does, makes high voltage, and it has a 6-volt winding, 12-volt uh, winding. So then they rewire for that. Well, anytime you drill a hole in this radio, you lower the price of the resellable, the resale price. Any extra hole you put in this radio, any rewire, you're going, well, I rewired this, or I did that. Uh, real collectors don't want that radio. It's been bodged. Okay, now there's people that have gone so far, I told you the last time, that they put a big brass plate on the front. Oh, this radio's been modified by blah, 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 puts his name real big on the plate. And then there's call letters. Now the guy trying to sell the radio has a piece of tape over the guy's calls. 
and they want a thousand five hundred dollars for that radio. Uh, that radio is worth, uh, let's see, seventy nine dollars after what that guy did to it as a collectible. Now I try to keep my radio original. Now the reason I'm building this like this is I can move this between radios. It takes longer than my other one. Go look at my uh, command radio one. It unplugs real quick. You can put, you can change the the power supply from one radio to another in less than 30 seconds, maybe even quicker. Okay, that's what I'm all about. Leave the radio original. Okay, but just remember the minus of the high voltage, which should be like 200 volts, uh, doesn't go to ground. And if you see any schematic that shows that, avoid it. You know, there's redrawers out there. There are people that redraw other people's circuits, put their name on it, pass it around, never having built the circuit. Uh, I worked with a guy like that. He took one of my circuits, he redrew it, passed it all around. He never got his work and uh, it was hilarious. It's hilarious stuff the way people operate. And I want to interject about the world. Uh, the world is basically totally crazy. You, the way you perceive the world, you make it sane. You pick out the pieces and make them fit together. You create reality. The world is basically totally insane. Uh, especially now, everybody's out for themselves. And I warn you about these radios. Uh, people that, that mess them up, drill holes, they think every hole they drill into the radio makes the radio go up in value. And the worst case I ever saw of that was I was at a ham flea market, and this guy had a, a radio. It was a, a, a Drake. And um, I walked over, and I think SW4, it was like a shortwave receiver radio. And it didn't have a BFO. And I walked over, and the guy wanted $75. And I'm looking, I'm like, it's really in good shape. And all of a sudden, I spot in the middle of the, 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 the front panel, which is silk screened, is a hole. And it's switched. I said, what's that for? He says, oh, I added a BFO. Well, why didn't you put that switch in line with something? It just, like, just grabbed the handrail and just popped the hole through the front panel of the radio. Not aligned with any other switch. Not aligned anywhere else. He could have put that in the back of the radio. You know, how hard is it to reach your hand around the back when you want to put the BFO on? No, he put it right in the middle of the nicest part of the silk screen front panel. And I'm, as I'm walking away, he dropped it to like 50 bucks. He goes, I'll, I'll take 50. And I'm like, no, nah, somebody will buy it. I said, I don't like that switch in the middle. Of like the, Well, I, I just did it real quick. And yeah, you, I, I knew that. You know, no thought at all. Just drill the hole. You know, he did add a BFO, and God only knows how he did that. But there's people out there that think, that think their shit doesn't stink. You know, some people think I'm that person. Well, you, you can think whatever you want. My, my job that I've taken on is showing you what other people don't show you and then uh, telling you don't screw shit up, okay? Because these radios, uh, they're, they're part history, and there's, there's, I won't say there's millions of them. There's thousands of them, and they're sitting in someone's cellar, or they're a shelf queen. It's never going to get a power supply in it. Uh, I told you I have one already, and um, it's got the dynamotor in there. All I had to build was a 12, uh, a 12, a 24 volt DC supply. You hook it up, turn it on, it lights all the tubes because it's all original, and then the dynamotor as it spins makes like 250 volts, something like that, maybe 350. I don't know, and um, the radio works fine, but as I'm using the radio, you hear that dynamotor spinning in there, and it's not real loud, but I figure to stay busy, I'll do another one of these and put one of my power supplies in. Now, I'm hoping this all works, you know. You know, if you saw my command radio, I take one transformer and feed it into another one backwards, and it worked fine, but I could only get 160, 160 volts after the, uh, the full-wave bridge and capacitor. I'm hoping I get a lot more, or not a lot more, get up closer to 200 with this. And I left the way I, I have the holes all drilled for transformers. I can swap out this transformer. Okay, I got, I, I, I get the, the measurements of the distance of the holes, the whole thing. This took a lot to get to this point. Just making my decisions, like, not to trap myself. You know, as I'm building it, I'm saying to myself, uh, do it so you can make some changes without c drilling more holes. I don't, I don't like to design anything without or build anything without thinking about it for a few days, and that's the way. I now I know I'm stuck with 
a six and one eighth inch by three and three quarter inch piece of aluminum. That's the that's the area of the aluminum piece. But then you got in here that, that comes in a little bit. So you lose that space. So, you know, I put the pen underneath here and I drew on the bottom of this thing to give me an idea where the parts have to be. I didn't just throw this thing together. I looked at pictures of people that just did that. And uh, a lot of them just took a dynamotor and took the motor, the dynamotor off the plate. And they used an original plate, which I'm like, oh, man, I can't believe they did that. You know, because now you got a, you got a, a dynamotor you throw out. And to make the radio whole, it has to have um, a, a dynamotor on it, it, museum quality. And now you got people with these radios looking for a dynamotor for it. And in some cases, they're $179. And when you bought them surplus, they were like 15 But people were buying them for $15 just to get the plate. So they didn't want to have to cut a piece of aluminum. You know, just just buy it, take the dynamotor off it, just to get the aluminum plate. But I just wanted to show you, you know, I am working on this. And I'm working very slowly. I do a little bit each day. Now, today I've got salvaged terminal strip. This is re recycled. Full-way bridge. This is 600... 600 volt full way bridge. Here's a, a recycled resistor. And I'll build that. I have standoffs. And I'll get I'll get this uh, uh, wired up today. And on its standoffs. And I might start wiring today. But I like to do a little bit each day. Just to stay busy. I also bought a box set of the TV show Monk. Now, I want to tell you. Monk is a pretty cool program. But. If you watch too many episodes in a row, you see how stupid it really is. The guy can't go anywhere without someone being murdered. Uh, the person that's murdered is always connected to someone he knows. You know, it, that part of it. So you don't catch on to that until you're maybe three years into the series watching it on television. Because each week you watch an episode. But when you have a box set, uh, you basically can spot things like the water. He only drinks a certain type of water. You can actually spot that he does sometimes drink a different brand. There's all kinds of things once you have the box set. But the other box that I, I pull out and I run is Northern Exposure because that program, uh, once you get past the doctor's personality and all the different people in the community, uh, the stories revolve around different people each week, also the doctor. But it's got a lot going for it. It's almost like Seinfeld. They don't just dwell on one little plot. They maybe run three plots that might come together or might be three different stories. So Northern Exposure is a thumbs up for me. Uh, if you're, you're into uh, cutting the cord and you want to watch uh, some CDs. And I also wanted to say that the price of tubes for radios has gone up. Uh, all the years people were collecting them like they were going to be worth a lot of money. And uh, they really haven't gone up that much. Tubes have not kept up with inflation. If you take a price of a tube... Uh, back in the 60s, put it in the inflation meter, it's still super cheap, okay? And the reason I'm saying this is I have to buy all new tubes for this radio because somebody put, took them out. And I didn't notice it in the pictures because I was going between four different radios on eBay and I just wanted to have something on the bench, something to each day, uh, put a few minutes into it, uh, think about it, then build it, then think about it, then build it. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Instead of standing there all day over this thing, working on it until it's done, and then taking it in that room I got and putting it on the pile. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things a little bit differently. Okay, and we've got this real bad heat wave going again. At my age, uh, a certain temperature is too hot for me. All right, so in other words, uh, above above say 78 degrees with the sun out it's really hot for me to be outside without trees and in lancaster it's all farmland so there's very few streets with trees on it unlike uh where i, where I came from in new jersey if you went around uh notley and that uh they the streets were lined with trees so you put a hat on and you go for a walk and you're under shade the whole time you're walking here you're out in the blazing sun and it has, it has a good point and bad point because when it's winter time and you're walking, it's not as bad uh, except for the wind. If it's windy, oh man, you get destroyed because there's no trees to, to slow the wind down. 
But I just want to go over this this power supply thing. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of you uh, have bought this radio. And you're looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. And uh, before I buy anything, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do something with it. And this was just specific, specifically a radio to kick around and to play with without changing it. Okay. Uh, like I said, people drill holes through these poor things. Your value goes right out of them. You know, somebody might buy it. You, know, you might get your money, but you most likely when you do those pictures, and people see that you you put it you drill a hole in the front panel that doesn't line up with any hole or any other control on the radio, and you put a big toggle switch to turn it on and off. Even if it's for standby, uh, when you put a switch on a radio, uh, you better line it up with with, other, with another control because it sticks out like a sore thumb. And this radio isn't exactly a beauty queen either, you know. So you're really you're really messing it up. But there are people that don't care. Because they're going to buy this radio, they're going to make believe they're going to recap it, build a power supply for it. And they're not. It's fantasy. Uh, like I said, there's these people on uh, YouTube that bring cars home. And they're telling you, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Now, over the, sh over the shoulder of the camera, over the guy's shoulder, you see a whole yard of, of, of uh, cars. And they're not even in there neatly and straight. And they got bushes growing around them. And it's just what it is. The guy gets a high. Every time he gets a good deal on a car and he brings it home and then he does a video. But then he, well, I didn't get to that one yet. I've watched a couple of those videos and I'm just like, you ain't ever going to get to it. I've been around people like you, uh, except they didn't have the property to store that many radio, um, radios, that many cars. Uh, I, I worked with people that stored cars in a garage and paid a monthly fee on them to the point where even if they restored the car and sold it and got a lot of money for it, they wouldn't break even. Okay. And their hobby was talking about the car and all the expenses they were paying to keep them in garages. And they didn't have any time because they had to work overtime to pay for the garages. It was, it was a nightmare. And I'm just sitting there going, you don't see the problem here? And the one guy I pointed it out to, and he, it hit him once in a while. And he goes, like, you're, you're bringing me down. I go, no, I'm, I'm just telling you, uh, if you haven't been... I asked him, like, when was the last time you worked on the car? Three years before. Three years ago. You, 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 got, you took the doors off the car. Yeah. So, so if you want to move the car to another garage, it's cheaper. The car is all apart. The wheels are all off it. So you can't even do that. So the guy raises your, gra your garage fee on you, and you can't even move it because it'll take you so many days of putting it together enough to get it on the tow truck. It, it's insanity that's out there. So with my hobby, I know I'm addicted to radio, radios. I went a few months without buying another radio. And I said, I made an, I made an adjustment. Okay, we'll, we'll get a radio and we'll work on a little bit each day. Okay, no more race to get it done to go put it on the pile. All right, everybody has their addictions, but you have to control them. You know, even my candy addiction, I was going to, to the dollar store every day and buying snacks and bringing them home. Now I go every other day. Okay, I've been cutting back because I made it to 70 and now I'm sort of going for 75. I think that's it. All right, that's it.